Hey and welcome back to FreePhotoshop.com and video number 9 in this exhaustive series looking at levels. In the last few videos we've been getting to grips with the input values that are available inside levels itself. Now we're going to switch our attention to the output values and instead of just sitting here and talking about them I'm going to show you how they work courtesy of a couple of images that I've got ready inside the bridge. So I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select the browse option. And that's going to open up the bridge and in this instance take me to the bridge's home page which may look different on your screen this is basically a HTML scripted dynamic web page so it will change whenever Adobe have something new to add to it for now I'm going to come over here to the favorites panel where I've made one of my favorites the freephotoshop.com tutorials folder a place on my hard drive where I've created and stored all of the tutorials that I'm involved with so if I go ahead and click on the tutorials folder and then on the levels folder and then once again on the output levels folder and by the way if you want to add a file or folder to your favorites here inside the bridge then just right click and select the add to favorites option. For now I'm going to double left click on this first image called black and white an image we saw a few videos back and if you remember rightly all this really happens to be is a black to white gradient running across the document. Now what I'm going to do is expand the palette over here on the right hand side and then drag out the info palette and then do the same with the histogram and then collapse the main palette bin over here on the right hand side and then just position the two open palettes. If you drag one palette onto the bottom of the other palette it will kind of attach itself to the other one which is a nifty little tip here inside of Photoshop CS3 at least. Now we're ready to open levels so hit Ctrl L on the keyboard or Command L if you're using a Mac and I'm just going to arrange things on screen here so we can see as much as possible. Okay so we all know what's going to happen if I move the black point slider for example. If I move up to say 50 brightness levels we're going to turn the pixels that have brightness levels of 50 or under completely black and just note two things while I'm doing this. First of all, we're making all of the pixels in this region of the image here black. So they're being darkened from just dark grey to pure black. Secondly, we're seeing the changes I make as they happen in the histogram up here. So whereas the grey graph in the background here belongs to that of the original image, the black graph in the foreground contains the updated live distribution of brightness levels throughout the image. So we're getting, as I say, a live preview of exactly what's happening inside the levels dialog box. The same would happen, by the way, if I changed the white point slider. But for now, I'm going to take the black point slider back to zero. So we have an unchanged histogram. Now the output values down here work in almost the opposite way. So instead of increasing contrast by stretching out the histogram as we do when we modify the input values, when we modify output values we're actually restricting the number of brightness values that are contained within the image and therefore we're reducing contrast. So if we take this black output slider and slowly increase it until we get to a value of say 50, you can see that we're now saying that we want the darkest pixel in the image to be mapped from 0, which is black, to 50, which is a darker grey. And then once again we redistribute all the values between 50 and 255 to evenly fill the spectrum in between. Now I'm going to tab to the white output slider and reduce it to say 200. So we no longer have any blacks or whites in the image. We're now just dealing with a concoction of light to dark greys. And once again the histogram above illustrates that by pushing the histogram into the center. And we can also move the eyedropper tool above what was previously black to reveal it now just as a dark grey. And you can see if you keep your eyes on this little RGB section inside the info palette here, if I can manage to hover the eyedropper directly over a pixel on the far left hand side here, you'll see that the pre-modified value of the pixel was 0 in all three channels, with the new value being 50 in all three channels. OK, I'm going to hold down Alt or option on the Mac and then press the reset button. Now I want to show you that we can work both the input and output values together. So I'm going to tab to the black slider of the input controls and I'm going to make every pixel in the image that has a brightness level of 1 to 5 or lower 
completely black. Now I could say, well instead of having all of those pixels turn to a pure black, I'm going to change the output level of the darkest colour from black to say a brightness level of 127 which is a mid-tone grey. So what we've actually done is first of all increase the amount of similar black pixels inside the image and then remapped them out to a dark grey so we've ultimately lowered the contrast of the image. OK I'm going to hit escape to capsule out of here then I'm going to hit Control W or Command W on the Mac to close the image. Now I'm going to press the little bridge button up here on the options bar to once again open the bridge up. And this time it will remember the folder I visited last time I used the bridge, which was just a few moments ago of course. So I'm going to come up here to the file menu once I've selected which image it is I want to open up. And then I'm going to select from the file menu the open command and that's going to open up the image into whatever version of Photoshop you're running. For me it's version CS3 but for you of course that will be different. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm viewing this image at 25% view size and that it's roughly where I want it on the screen. Okay so we have here a full color photograph of the Chrysler building in New York City. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control or Command L here on the keyboard to open up the Levels dialog box and we've got a pretty full-on histogram going here with a little clipping in both the shadows and the highlights. Anyhow, as far as the output values go, because that's what I'm trying to keep in mind that this is a video tutorial all about the output values. Uh, one thing I should mention though about output values is that you're not going to find them anywhere near as useful when fixing digital photographs as the input values are. As I said before, all we can do with these controls is reduce contrast, so generally you're not going to find them all that helpful. Even when you're trying to put a luminance mask together for example, you're going to be wanting to use the input values because chances are if you're building a mask then you're going to need to increase the contrast rather than reduce it. Anyhow, there is one really fantastic thing you can do with the output levels as far as I'm concerned, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. For now we could try switching out the two output values so we have black set to 255 and white set to 0 and that's going to invert the image which is quite an interesting effect. Not anything great but there you go that's something that you can do with the output controls. I'll go ahead and reset that. We can also take the black point value to say around 220 which is going to squish the brightness levels inside the image to 45 giving us a very bright but also very low contrast image and this is an effect we could use as a background to a PowerPoint presentation for example. The low contrast of the image will help the text in the foreground stand out more prominently or that's generally how it works anyway. OK I'm going to cancel out of here once again and hit Control W to close the image that's Command W on the Mac of course then hit Control shift o here on the PC, or Command shift o on the Mac, to open up the Adobe Bridge. And this time I'm going to right-click on this DVD main menu PSD file here and select the Open With command. And from there I'll choose Photoshop CS3. And you can choose whichever version you're running, we've already been through that. And it will open the file inside Adobe Photoshop. And by the way, if you don't have access to Adobe Bridge for some reason, perhaps you're using an older version of Photoshop, which is fine, you can just open your files using the old browse command, which will open up the Adobe file browser, not actually called the bridge, but it is a standard file browser, the same as the Windows file browser or the Mac file browser. Any of them you can use to open up these images and get them into Photoshop. Whichever way you do it, though, I'd always recommend opening these files and working along with me. OK, now if you're opening this image with me, then you may also see this little warning dialog box come up. And what Photoshop's saying here is that it's going to display this image as if it's being viewed on a television set. So in this case, it's trying to imitate the pixel aspect ratio of the PAL video standard, which is 1.07, which is the standard pixel size of all broadcast equipment here in the UK and across Europe, and indeed anywhere that follows the PAL standards. If you're working elsewhere in the world, then the video standard and aspect ratio will be different to what you're seeing here. Anyhow, you don't need to worry about any of that because we're not going to be outputting this onto a television. 
Not saying that you can't do that if you really want to. This is, after all, a working PSD file that can be used inside Adobe's production studio with applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects, and its native authoring program, uh, Adobe Encore. Anyhow, the reason we've loaded this image is because when you're creating broadcast-ready material, you'll be amazed to find out that televisions don't deal very well with highly saturated and overly luminant material. It's a little known fact that whilst the bright whites in the sky here will render and display perfectly on a computer monitor, when they're sent to be viewed on a television set they'll end up flickering. So we need a way of ensuring that the brightness levels and luminance information doesn't trip a certain level in this photograph, and we can do all of that by using the output sliders inside the levels dialog box. Now I'm sure some of you are sitting there and thinking, you know, hey Matt, why don't you just use the NTSC filter available in the filters menu to reduce this kind of problem? Well, I'd reply by saying that you've got a point, obviously. The NTSC filter inside the filters menu is another way to work, but in my experience, you'll get much smoother and much more realistic results by doing things this way. Okay, I'm going to hit F7 to bring up the layers palette, and you'll see that we've got multiple layers visible inside this image. In fact, we're looking at a fairly complex composition, and we need a way of applying this levels command to all the layers at once, instead of having to go into each layer individually and rasterizing it possibly, and also applying the same settings. Thankfully there is a way we can do this, and that's by ensuring the top layer is active here in the layers palette, and then coming up here to the layers menu, selecting new adjustment layer, and then selecting levels. Now we're going to be spending some time looking at non-destructive applications of the levels command by using adjustment layers, among other things, in the upcoming tutorials here in this series. So I'm not going to go into any real detail here. For now I'm just going to accept the default naming convention for this layer and hit OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and reduce the output values of this image to 235. So we've no longer got any brightness values inside the image above 235 brightness levels. And I'm also going to increase the darker colours in the image to say 15 brightness levels. So we haven't got any pixels that are pure black either. Another little tip for smooth output to a television set by the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK to accept those changes. And we now have, thanks to the output controls here inside levels, a broadcast ready DVD menu that we can import straight into Encore for offering. Okay, we've now covered everything that I consider to be in the realms of the basics, as far as levels go anyway. In the following video tutorials, we're going to be moving on to the more advanced stages, starting in the very next video where we take a look at applying non-destructive edits of the levels command. Just another way of working that's going to give us so much more flexibility as we continue our journey through this series. Well, I hope you're learning from and enjoying this series here at freephotoshop.com. I'll catch you in the next video.